can't believe that in a few short months, I'll be 30 years old. Still a young'un, I know. But because the average lifespan of those in my community is so horrifically short, I'll soon be old enough to be considered a trans elder. Even though I've only really been me for about two and a half years at this point, and have only just begun to properly live my life. Self-discovery is a process that never really ends, and I've been taking my journey day by day to see which sides of myself and personality reveal themselves while giving myself the room to bloom and reach out in whichever direction I feel drawn in. I've fleshed out who Alice is and my identity as a gender flux trans woman, and now get to move forward with the same confidence and grounding as cis people or those who came out much earlier in life than I did. But the realization hit me recently that seemingly overnight, I've become the kind of role model and example that I've wished I'd had earlier on in my journey, perhaps around the time I finally reckoned with my transness. I'm a teacher who's still being taught by life and others, which is how I suppose it is for all teachers, now that I think about it. <laughs> it's overwhelming, surreal, intimidating, and incredibly exciting all at the same time. And because of that, at a moment's notice, you can fall into a spiral of worrying about every little word you say and the messages you're communicating. Even though I want to steer the younger generation in the right direction, I will readily acknowledge that I'm just a woman who's doing the best that she can and will likely never know all there is to know about the trans experience, especially since everyone's experiences are uniquely theirs. But experience in my mind is the most effective teacher because it leads to wisdom, the building block of the self. You don't have to be the world's foremost expert on anything to be a good teacher. Just sharing the wisdom that your years have given you will be enough to inspire those who receive it to at the very least keep moving forwards. Especially when you have a public platform like this and are fully aware that thousands upon thousands of people like you are at this very moment looking up to you as a voice and leader for whichever community and or causes you've built your platform on. What I'm doing right now is functionally the same as activists during the Stonewall era and those involved in the modern fight for trans rights. And I want to be the best example that I can. Honestly, this community is the reason I'm even alive at 29 in the first place. And if I do anything with my life, I want to be a voice amongst many that seeks to empower those who empowered me, challenge all of the toxic hierarchies, dogmas, and cultural ideals that sought to dehumanize or outright eliminate us. And most importantly, give some hope, affirmation, and encouragement to younger members of my community, some of whom I know are watching this right now, and say to embrace and love yourself against all odds is one of the truest signs of strength I know. It's possible to make it to where I am right now. And through the telling of my life and how I survived to this exact point, I hope I can show y'all how. I was born in darkness and was rebirthed in light. And my childhood was indeed a dark time that even now is difficult for me to think about. Have you ever felt loneliness and hopelessness so intense that it felt like your body was wrapped in an aura of pain? Like all your nerves could feel was an ocean of trauma and emptiness pressing in upon you and existence itself had lost its color and vividness. That was me for 20 plus years of my life. And it all began when I had a realization about myself. Something I couldn't put into words because I was all of six years old at the time and didn't know what being trans meant. All I knew was that the whole of my existence and the way my inner self felt and responded to the world was different different than what boys were supposed to feel. I, I never truly understood what being a boy meant. My family pushed me to adopt the more typical characteristics of a young boy in America by sending me to the Boy Scouts, having me wear standard boy clothes, and raising me as any parent would raise a child they assumed was indeed a boy. They were already emotionally and physically distant from me because of my autism diagnosis. Understandably so, and even though I obliged and went where they led. At no point did any of it ever feel natural or comfortable to me. It's as if I'd been cast to play a role that I not only knew nothing about, but had little to no understanding of. 
it was forum. And it didn't take long for others to catch on and for me to begin to feel the pressure of societal forces and the willingness of others to ostracize you when you don't fit a well-defined cultural or behavioral stereotype. We fear what we don't understand and react defensively instead of lowering our guards and being willing to embrace what's unknown rather than familiar. And I remember so distinctly whenever I was in the first grade feeling as if I were stuck between two worlds. I didn't understand boys. Why they roughed housed, talked, and thought the way they did. Why it felt as if I'd been tuned to a different wavelength than them and was forever disconnected. And they didn't understand me. For years they would jab me with things like, why do you act like a girl? Are you gay? You're not much of a boy, etc. And I never knew how to respond because at that point all I knew was that I wasn't like them. But I didn't know how or even how to express that. It was a completely different story with girls. It wasn't just that I was more comfortable around them or was able to get along with them and relate better to them and that most of my friends were... You know, there was a part of me that whispered, they're like me, over and over again, and I wanted more than anything to understand why, but was terrified of coming off as creepy or invading their boundaries because East Texas culture teaches that boys stick with boys and girls stick with girls, and that is that. I didn't want to be part of one world and felt as if I weren't allowed to be in another, and it left me feeling as if I didn't have an island of my own, as if I'd be stranded to suffer the trials of life by myself, as if everyone were side-eyeing me and making judgments and accusations that I wanted to defend myself from, but I was too scared to do so. If I spoke up, I'd have an even bigger target painted on my back, and I was already being physically abused by kids in school nearly every day. They wanted me to know that I was an outlier, that outliers are not welcome in society, and that they would continue to come back over and over again and pick at the one one thing I was too terrified to reveal to anyone until I either just came out with it or offed myself to escape. It was hell. And because of how deeply conservative and religious East Texas is, I didn't have any queer role models to guide me and help me put together the puzzle pieces that were already so close to one another. I had the church, I had a religious conservative family, and I lived in an area that could only be described as a living echo chamber. At every single turn, it was beat into my head that I had to conform, that choosing to follow a different path than the one that your family and God determined for you is a sign of you straying from your purpose and who you actually are as if they understood who I was better than I did and that the only way I'd ever be accepted is if I'd surrendered myself, submitted to a higher authority, and allowed myself to be slotted into a hierarchy that was built to keep all things in line for the powerful figures behind the church and cis-heteronormative society. It's a death trap for people like me. Too many of us fall through the cracks because some families would rather abandon their child or throw the Bible at them for hours on end than accept the horrific thoughts that their child is queer, that this is who they are, that their God may have actually made their child that way, and that no amount of religious brainwashing or emotional and or physical abuse will change what is unchangeable. But my parents, those I went to school with, preachers, clergy people, and adults in my Methodist church did all they could to take a scalpel to my identity and carve me into something that fit their image of me rather than just allowing me to exist. And that so many of them genuinely thought they were coming from a place of love when they did this because they didn't understand how deeply they'd been brainwashed by religious and conservative dogma and weren't aware of how they'd been taught to see people like myself or even queerness itself as something to fear. That its very presence meant a destabilization within society, the church, the family, the self and that in order to fix it, it meant doing away with the very thing causing that destabilization. Here I was, little teen Alice, so innocent and loving, and just trying to understand the world and herself, and she was plunged into the cold, into a fear of herself, into a resistance towards wanting to dig into her identity and the isolation of her from everyone else.
around her. When you're no longer accepted by those around you and can't even find it within you to accept yourself, you experience a kind of sadness and loneliness that can't be put into words. As if there's this growing black pit in your stomach that gnaws away at you little by little until that blackness consumes you. I hated myself. I hated my body. I hated my voice. I hated the mask that I put on for the world. I hated existence itself. I was deeply alone and didn't know how to communicate everything I was feeling because I was too afraid to do so. All I wanted was to die so I wouldn't have to experience another day of this god awful pain at 14 years old. What love for life and myself I could have had had been torn from my hands and the only existence I had was miserable to the point where now most of my childhood memories are gone. Perhaps it's for the best because it means so much of that horrific darkness will forever be kept out of my reach. It'll remain buried in the past just like the self I tried to construct before I came to terms with who I truly was. When I at last confronted myself and thought, why am I living for the expectations of others instead of just letting myself be? Why am I allowing others to dictate the terms of my life instead of being the sole arbiter of my own destiny? Why am I being told to shy away from and be a afraid of something within me that is the only goddamn thing in my life that's even beginning to make sense. Those were the flames that began to light one by one and set me upon the path that would allow me to shed the persona that was nothing more than a shield and at last allow Alice to be born, to take a deep breath of fresh air, and suddenly understand what it is to be alive, to be happy, and to know yourself, to be grounded in your own skin and your own identity. And to see the rest of the world turn upside down as the opening of your eyes to yourself also opens your eyes to the unthinkable extent of reality that was once distorted by those around you. By those who kept you at arm's length from finding yourself, knowing truth, living in thinking for yourself and the ability to just be you for no one else but you. The swells of joy I felt whenever I realized I didn't have crushes on girls but wanted to be them. And the clarity that shone within me when I began treading lightly into the more feminine sides of myself that I'd kept stored away for years were all consuming and seemingly at once redirected the entire trajectory of my life as if now I were facing down my actual self and the only direction I could go from here on out. It was right there. It made perfect sense. I'm a woman. Holy shit. Everything clicked into place and every little struggle, every little contradiction between who I was and who the world wanted me to be, every single spark that I extinguished out of fear, every nudge of my heart towards the revelation that was all but inevitable, it all went back to my identity, my dysphoria, the fact that I was right all along about there being a deeper truth within myself that was just waiting to be discovered. At once, my entire world and life changed. And with this turn of events came yet another twist. I would need to tell my parents. The very people who had preached the gospel of heteronormativity in my ears for years and years and would see this as a sign that their child was in need of rescue. But the only way I'd be able to tear free from the coarse rope that was tied to the anchor they held in their hands would be to confront them with all the things their whitewashed religion told them was unbecoming of any good servant of God and show how all of those things existed within me. If they knew their child was happier despite them not understanding the nature of transness and identity, would they relinquish control and allow me to learn how to walk completely on my own? Or would they reveal that their love was conditional and that having a trans child is something they simply couldn't accept or learn to live with? Even if they never agreed. I wondered if we'd at least be able to have some sort of existence with one another, even if it was more distant than before. But the moment I opened Pandora's box to them was the moment I knew my relationship with them would never return to the way it was before. I was accused of mutilating myself, told that I'd be a caricature of myself, and bombarded with comments like, you'll always be the man God made you to be and there's nothing you can do to change that. We miss the sweet, loving, smart, accepting child we raised. You 
weren't born to be an anarchist, pagan, any of this. This is not who you are. You've broken our law. You must return at once and see the error in your ways, for you are lost. And this went on for years. Preached at and gaslit and treated as if I didn't know what the fuck I was doing, even though I was the one who'd been living in my head alongside all these feelings and instincts for the past 27 years. We'd reached an impasse, an impenetrable ideological barrier, and a bridge that couldn't be crossed at this point in time, even though someday it could be. Even though I had embraced my truth and now wanted more than anything to live it, I knew I would have to make a sacrifice in order for that life to come into being. Putting myself above all else and ensuring the early stages of my transition were as healthy, beautiful, and unhurried as they could be meant cutting ties to any and all things that sought to destabilize me and fill my head with even more anxiety than usual. It was the only way. You never want to lose family, but you are under no obligation to keep anyone in your life regardless of their relation to you if you know full well you'd be better off without. The blood of the covenant is thicker than the blood of the womb, after all. And there was a family somewhere out there in the world that would be one of my own choosing, one that understood what it meant to be queer, confused, lonely, traumatized, but also brave, beautiful, strong-willed, and golden-hearted. They wouldn't look down upon me with disdain or as if I've been permanently stained with a red letter because I dared to throw their gospel on the floor, wholeheartedly reject it, turn my back on them, and refuse to bow to anyone else's will but mine. And that family wouldn't be found in the rolling green hills of East Texas. It would be somewhere else. Somewhere unfamiliar, but somewhere more welcoming and more aligned with not only who I was, but who I was becoming. I could not, at this point in my flights, do a single thing that could harm its trajectory. And so a decision was made. Move halfway across the country to a place I'd never been, where I didn't know anyone, and where I'd be starting my life over from scratch. All in the name of survival. All in the name of building something that actually had value and truth to it. Something in which I had full control over. And something that would allow me to bloom and burst forth unrestrained and finally grow grasp the burning chalice of life and consume it fully. It meant leaving behind everything and everyone I knew and venturing out into the great unknown. It had to be done. And the moment the lights of Austin faded in my rearview mirror was the moment I knew there was no turning back. All that was ahead was something better. The kind of life I had only seen glimpses of. All that was left to do was drive through thousands of miles of mountains, snowy plains, and valleys to get there. And lo and behold, over a year and a half later, here I am. The universe tried its damnedest, but somehow it didn't kill me, and I don't know if I'll ever understand how I made it out unscathed. All the trauma from those times is still raw and present in my mind. I am so much more deeply afraid of people, of being judged, of being torn down with words or violence, of being alone, and of being vulnerable than I've let on over the six months I've broadcast myself to millions on the internet. And it's not something that's ever going to go away. More becomes soft rather than callous, and a numb ache instead of a white hot hurricane that fills every corner of your minds. My heart is deeply scarred, and always will be. And I'm still coming to terms with that. But despite all of the odds being against me, I'm the happiest I've ever been, and I'm living the kind of life that I never thought I'd have the privilege to live. And as I leave my 20s, the most difficult and transformative decade of my life, and the decade in which I found myself, I'm staring down the beginning of my 30s, a decade in which literally anything is now possible. And all of this was due to making one single decision, which turned out to be the most important decision of my life. To embrace and love yourself against all odds is one of the truest signs of strength 
I know. And every one of you watching who are the future of this community, you yourself possess that kind of strength within you, even when it's difficult to see. Even though we're far removed now from the atrocities that were committed against the LGBTQ community before Stonewall, we still have light years to go before we'll be able to, from birth, live the kind of life that the cis community is automatically handed. But we don't have to mold ourselves to fit a society that was never built for us. You all have the power to change it. It's been so incredibly inspiring seeing more and more of you shuck off the traditions of the past and openly express yourself in ways I couldn't even have dreamed of a decade ago. You're already making huge waves and leaving an indelible mark on society and I couldn't be prouder of you. Seriously. We in the trans community know a thing or two about perseverance, adversity, and living underneath the thumb of our oppressors as it tries to grind us into the pavements. But we, being the naturally rebellious souls that we are, still manage to bloom despite our circumstances. The world is a cold place, but you make it brighter. Never forget that. Just surviving may not exactly seem like a huge accomplishment, but in my mind, it is. You've made it this far, and you've a beautiful voyage ahead. To steer you on the way, I want to read something I wrote a year ago that rings just as true now as it did then. For the first time in my life, I'm happy, whole, and feel a true sense of belonging in my body, with my emotions and sense of self, in others' lives and in the world. The missing puzzle piece fell and a place and it's as if life has finally begun at age 29. All of my feelings are vivid, deep, colorful, overwhelming, and wholly welcomed. I love myself, my life, loved ones around me, and I have an unquenchable desire to shower love and validation over every single person I meet, especially my siblings in the trans community. They don't call me Mother Alice for no reason. <laughs> I want to experience profound, intense, platonic, and intimate relationships. I want to build a life that I can be proud of. I want to make a difference for those I love and look up to. I want to give back to a community that saved my life. Without you all, there's a chance I wouldn't be around today. And I mean that. When I discovered myself, a Pandora's box was open that could never again be shut. And the only choice I had left, the one thing I knew I had to do, was transition and become myself at long last. I know how it feels to wish life as you know it could just come to an end. I know what it's like to never be able to escape the horrid, soul-crushing loneliness when you shut yourself away from others. All because you can't stand yourself, your body, your voice, and this identity that you know isn't you. But you're terrified of what could happen if you choose to take that first step towards the other side, towards freedom, towards finally understanding yourself on the deepest, most powerful level. You don't want to lose your family, friends, livelihood, home, life. This is the only stability you've ever known, and what isn't known scares the hell out of you. But if you're in this position right now, just ask yourself one thing. Are you willing to live the rest of your existence in regrets and never know what could have happened if you had done one of the bravest things any human being can do? Love and accept yourself as you are completely and fully. Could you really live with yourself if you chose to please others instead of yourself, no matter how much it hurt and drained you? Are you willing to let others' opinions of you dictate who you choose to be? Or would you rather have full control over your life, the choices you make for your body, mental, physical, and spiritual health, your identity, sexuality, morals, belief system? No one else on this planet can choose for you. Only you have the power to discover your true self and make your life what you've always wanted and or needed it to be. This is the only life we have. This is the only time we'll ever be able to share our experiences and love with one another. This is the only community we will ever have. And this community and family will always have your back. We will always love and accept you. We will always validate your existence and identity. We will always see you as a beautiful, strong human being, and we will never, ever abandon you. Family is forever, and this family is one I will forever be grateful for. I love 
every single one of you always will and will fight tirelessly to make sure you never ever feel like something is wrong with you because nothing is wrong with you you're in a process of figuring yourself out and that process comes with pain confusion loneliness anxiety but most of all growth every dot that you connect pushes you closer to becoming you know you. And everything will become clear before you know it. Even with the winds against you, keep going and don't ever give up on yourself. A day will come when you look back and thank the person you used to be for choosing to keep living instead of ending it all. There comes a point where we all must choose. And when that time comes, I hope you choose yourself.